What's up, YouTube? It's your boy JB, and I am here with a review for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 3, Episode 2. The episode is titled Problems. This land ain't one. Alright, you guys, so I've actually already recorded this, so this is the second time I've recorded this. I hope that you guys can hear this one loud and clear. Um, so before we get into the review, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel and you're watching any any video, this video or any video on the channel, hit me do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, you guys. All right, you guys. So without further ado, let's talk about the episode, shall we? All right, you guys. So let's talk about Kimmy. So Kimmy went down to Maurice's office to have a conversation with him, right? So she told him about, you know, teacher's graduation picnic, you know, that they had a conversation with one another and how, you know, Tisha's still talking about the fact that, you know, she doesn't reach out and to her, you know, um, she doesn't reach out to her, which you're a grown ass woman. That's my issue with Tisha. You're a grown woman. Why do you feel that people have to reach out to you? Like, I get that she said that Wanda told her she didn't, you know, she never said that she loved her. That's a problem between you two. You got to figure that shit out. And then, you know, Kimmy's talking about, you know, she told, but she told her, you know, the reason why I haven't reached out to you is because of the things that I've heard, you know, heard that you are going around, you're telling people that I'm a bad sister to you or whatnot. I don't know why Kimmy puts in the, the time, the effort or anything when it comes to that, that Tisha. Like, I just don't get it. Don't get it at all. Wouldn't be me. So then we do see, we see Monster. Monster has actually gotten really big, right? So he's getting ready for high school. So then he comes in the house and, you know, Maurice and Kimmy ask him what will he be doing for the summer? And he says he's going to, you know, try to work. So they said, you know, what are you going to do? He says he's going to mow lawns. And they looked outside and they were like, but our lawn, it needs to be, mow it needs to be mowed. So what are you going to do? So he said he's going to tell Kai what to get him one of those riding lawn more. So Maurice is like, hey. So that means you'll do the work, but not really doing the work. I mean, if you look at it that way, I guess so, Maurice. So then they call Kiowa, and they tell Kiowa, you know, what school Monster's going to go to. And what trips me up with Maurice is the fact that, you know, him and Monster are on FaceTime with Kiowa. This whole time, Kimmy is on the side of, on the side of Monster. So Kimmy had to interject and be like, hey, I'm here as well, Kiowa. Now, it looked a little, you know, it looked like Kyle wasn't really feeling Kimmy at that point. But then she eventually said to Kyle and to Maurice that they need to sit down, talk, and have a conversation with each other, which I agree with that. It's long overdue at this point. They're married. I don't know what Kyle will be holding on. They're married. Kyle was married. So I don't know at this point why anybody would have any residual feelings toward the other I don't care if Kaiwa says that, you know, she and Maurice were not divorced when Kimmy and, and Maurice got together. They're married now. You're remarried. There shouldn't be an issue. So, yeah, she told them that she wants to sit down and talk with them. So we'll see how that goes. But let's move on. All right, you guys, next let's talk about Tisha and Marcel, right? So Tisha says that, you know, the picnic... It was really a success, but you know, I wish that my mom was there. And it's just like, your mama should not have come. I think Marceau did a good thing by not inviting Wanda. And then she further says, but you know what? It was no drama there, so maybe my mama shouldn't have come. You're correct. Your mom should not have come. You know how your mom is. With this whole situation with Kimmy, Wanda would have saw Kimmy. Wanda would have made a beeline to Kimmy. Like, let's not forget last season how things ended up with um, Martell and, and Wanda and, and, um, and Mel. Remember, Wanda wasn't minding her business, walked up to Mel, talking to Mel, and then Martell overheard, and then that whole debacle happened. So, yeah, at this point, let's not invite Wanda to any of the events. Let's keep her away from them, right? So then, you know, she tells, um, you know, Marcel that, you know, she talked to Kimmy and I told Kimmy how, you know, I, you know, how, how well, she, no, she said Kimmy told her how she felt about the things that, you know, she said. 
but for Tisha, I think it just literally is going in one ear and out the other with Tisha. I just don't think she's really listening or comprehending what Kimmy told her, right? So then Marcel told Tisha that, you know, her family, her family checked him about him potentially having another child, an outside child. Now, I've heard, you know, I've heard about this stuff. Um, I know, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Tasha K did an interview with with somebody about him. Because wasn't it alleged that he was messing with Mel's hairstylist that is also cousins to Martel? Let me know if that's correct, you guys. And all of this is alleged, so I don't want anybody to be like, oh, I, you know, JB said no. Allegedly. So then teacher says, you know, that would be a whole issue if you had a, um, an outside job because I would divorce you and take you for everything that you got. That would be the smartest thing she could do. But the thing with me is, you know, he says, well, I would forgive you. Marcel, you a line sacker. Uh, you know what? So you mean to tell me if Tisha went and had a baby with someone else, that's not you, you would forgive her. Right. Don't believe shit that's coming out of his mouth either. You know, some of the men on this show. Trash. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Let's talk about Melody real quick. I like Melody, but damn. I just wish when it comes to that ex-husband of hers, she would stop entertaining him. That is what he lives for. That is what he thrives for. The entertainment from Mel. So Mel is waiting for Martel to show up to pick up the kids, right? And then, you know, he shows up and she takes him outside and they, you know, they sit down and talk. So she tells him, like, you know, Martel, you've been taking jabs at me on social media. The one thing about him is he does not know how to take what accountability for anything he does. He always likes to flip it and, you know, make it something that he's, he's, he's doing something because Mel did this. So, you know, she's talking about the late, the, that post that Destiny mentioned to him last week about him with Milani. And, he, you know, her first day of school, he's like, you know, four down and one more to go, which is five. So, you know, she tells him she wants to set some boundaries, right? Which I think that's a good thing. With a person like him, definitely set boundaries, right? So then she tells him, um, you know, that, you know, it's an issue for her when they're texting about him coming to pick up the kids and he says that he can't come get them. But then she gets a text message later on that he's at, you know, an event. Then here comes a Jedi mind trick with Martel. He takes it and flips it and makes it about Mel, right? So he says that, well, you know, I could do the same thing for you because, you know, Whenever you tell me you're sick, then I see that you're in Atlanta. Um, we were talking about, see, I just, honestly, like I said, when it comes to Mel, I wish that, number one, she needs to block him on social media. Number two, anybody that's friends with her, tell them, hey, I blocked Martel. Don't send me anything from Instagram. Don't send me anything from t Twitter, Snapchat, where Facebook, because I know they're on Facebook. Don't send me any screenshots. I don't want to see it. So that way, I don't. She's uh, she's pretty oblivious. Only thing you send me is if you see anything where my kids look like they're in danger. Other than that, I don't care. Don't want to see him with a new baby. Don't want to see my kids with him and a new baby, or that other woman. Like just keep it away from me I think that would be the best thing for her right so, but then he's also talking about the fact that she curses at him you know she says things on social media it's just like dude because after I watched we watched, after I you know saw some of the comments last week about the photo that he posted I didn't think about it. I'm like you know what it was Martel trying to get a, a rise get a reaction from Mel and like I keep saying, the best thing for her is to not give him what he's looking for. And like I said, what he's looking for is a rise. He's looking for a reaction. And she gives it to him. The minute she stops giving it to him, it would be the minute that he says, you know what, damn. 
I guess Mel is really over me at this point, which I think she is over him. I'm not going to say her like she's not over him. But in his brain, I think in his brain, he feels that, you know, damn, she still want me. Like, if I, I, I can still get her back. But he does eventually apologize for her post. Do I believe him? Not at all. So then, uh, you know, Mel is telling Martella that, you know, you went on this whole, you know, this whole t tour basically disrespecting me. So they, then they showed us who uh, he's interviewed with. He did an interview with Dr. Heavenly. I, I, when I saw it's all, it, it showed up on my YouTube. I'm like, I'm, I, I clicked on it for a second and I clicked off of it. Then he did one with Steve Harvey. Did not see that one. Then what else happened? Oh, it was the one she did with Funky Dineva. I watched that one in, in, in its entirety. Loved it. But she was talking about when I was with Funky Dineva, you called him. And I remember that because he called like three times, two or three times. And at one point, Dineva picked up the phone and said, you know, it's, somebody's calling me from Huntsville. And she called out the number. She said, she called out the number. She said, he said, that's it. She's like, oh, yeah, that's Martell. So then he says the reason why he kept calling is because she was on, on that interview lying. Okay, Marcel. I don't know what she lied about because you said, I mean, you've said this shit on television, especially the one about her not sucking your dick. And the thing is, she said, even Mel said it, it's not like she has never done it. It's just that she doesn't do it to, you know, every day or stuff like that. So then, you know, she tells him that they may need to see someone to help them with co-parenting. And surprisingly, he agrees to that. So then he goes in the house and Miss Vanessa is there, right? And, Miss, he, you know, he tried to give Miss Vanessa a hug. And Miss Vanessa was like, she gave him a cold shoulder. And I'm like, come on, Miss Vanessa. Love my girl, Miss Vanessa. So, you know, she tells him that, you know, you said some bad things about Mel. And I think that we ought to just sit down and talk. He told her he doesn't want to. I'm like, ugh. I don't know. But see, the thing about Miss Vanessa and Melody is Mel gave him what he wanted. Miss Vanessa, Miss Vanessa gave him the hand. He's like, you know what, Martell? I don't have time for you. And he said, kids, calm down because your grandmother just gave me the hand. Really? Okay. I promise you guys I can't stand him. I promise you. But he's not going to get my pressure up. So we're going to move on. All right, guys, I got one more scene with Mel. So we see Mel. So Mel's at her office, and her friend Tiffany comes by the office. So Tiffany recently got remarried, and, you know, she asks um, Mel, you know, how is she? And then, you know, Mel tells her, you know, she's good. You know, she's um, loving getting, the, you know, she's loving herself these days, and she's enjoying that. And then, you know, Tiffany says that, you know, um, you know, she had some bad days after her, her first divorce. And then, is that their resort fee again? Um, so yeah. So yeah, you know, um, she said she thought about Mel and then, she thought about Mel. So Mel says, you know, um, so she's good in a nutshell. So then she says to her, Mel says to Tiffany that, you know, she's looking for guidance and that she needs some help with rebranding, you know, basically all of her businesses that she has. And she's just looking for some interns. And then she invites this Tiffany girl to, you know, a brunch or something, a, an event that doesn't is having because she wants her to meet the other lady. So I'm assuming this is the newest cast member because I know that they have a, a new couple on the show. So I don't know if it's Tiffany and her husband, which I think it is. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it with that scene. And let's move on. All right, you guys, let's talk about this big ass child, Martell. Brace yourselves. I just don't understand him. Like, his logic, his thought process, it just it doesn't resonate with me because it doesn't make any sense, right? So we see Marcel. So he went over to Chris Fletcher's house, right? And he's asking Chris, you know, what's up with you? So Chris is studying for his builder's license. So then Martel says that, you know, they should study together. And then he was talking about the fact that 
he um he's talking about the fact that you know he's taken his award about seven times i guess at this point so then chris tells him at the 47 acres they closed he also tells him that you know the chris tells martel that the developer you know wanted him to reach out to mel and see if she still has her license and if she wanted to build so then you know um martel felt that chris should have let him know before going and talking to mel but i'm glad chris said to him that you know i did talk to her she said it was your passion and she didn't want any conflict but like i said martel feels that his allegiance his loyalty should be to him so he feels he should have came to him first before going to mel martel is a damn fool like he's he's feeling betrayed at this point like i, I didn't understand it it's business like why would i go to someone who who doesn't have a builder's license why would i talk to you first you don't have the builder's license but he says he knows people who do have theirs i need a guarantee because you could say you know these people who have their license we go to them ask them if they'll build they could say oh no you know that's not something that we're looking to do which the same could be what happened with mel but Mel doesn't have to go through anybody. You send her the schematics and all that. She reviews it. She looks at it. If it's something that she wants to do, she can tell you yay or nay. You're with these people that Martel knows. It's going off of blind faith. And then, like I said, number one is business. It's, it's business over loyalty. And it's basically what Chris was trying to tell him. And I'm just like, dude, go to hell. So then we see Mel and Martel. So they're doing this co-parenting session to write. And I just cannot with Martel Holt. So I just really came with him. So then he, you know, um, the, the, the lady asked them, you know, if the kids are, you know, seeing in counseling or getting therapy. So Martel feels that the kids are good at this point. I'm like, really? Your kids are not good. And then Mel chimes in and says, you know, she, you know, the woman notices that Mel made, it a, made a face. And she said, what is that face? And Mel says, you know, the oldest child, you know, she, no, she's not good. The baby, the middle child, the little, the, the youngest girl, well, not the baby, but, you know, the five-year-old, she has wrote a song, and then little Martel is disconnected from his father because he sees the way that his father has treated his mother. So, no, these kids are not good. The kids need to sit down and talk to somebody. I've been saying that since last season, that the kids need to sit down and have a conversation with someone that is not their parents and you know um then martel talks about the fact that he's not doing so well financially i don't know if i was supposed to feel sad or anything for him because i don't you put yourself in the situation you and your penis put yourself in the situation so i don't necessarily feel bad for him i do feel bad for the kids but not him so then um I was, I was listening to him, I'm like, is this an excuse to why you can't get the kids? And then he says he's not working as much, so he can't do as much with the kids. So then, you know, he starts to, in my opinion, fake cry. So Mel, you know, rubbed his shoulder, right? He told her, Mel, stop. And, you know, the woman was like, are you not used to her, you know, being like this affection towards you? No. I promise you that man works my spirit. So then, you know, she mentions you know the other baby right and we find out that they have yet to tell the other kids about them so the woman just gives them some tips about how they can sit down and they both should sit down with the kids and have a conversation with them it'll be interesting right so then they leave the session and after they leave this is when the big baby brings up the 47 acres and, you know, he thanks her, you know, he thanks Melody for, t you know, telling Chris that, you know, she felt that he, you know, she, her feeling that Chris should have talked to Martel, right? But then he, you know, she said, but I don't really see, I didn't really see anything wrong with what he did, which again, like I said, didn't see anything wrong with it either, right? So then, you know, she tells him that she is considering building on the 47 acres. I really want the 47 acres to go away at this point, like I said last week. So then he gets upset, right? Telling Mel she's never built the, built the house. She says, oh, I built the house before. And then what did she say to him? She said, you know, I can say the same thing for you, that you've never built the house. Then it was just back and forth, and like I said a few minutes ago. She just, 
need to stop with him. Like, he does these little things to get in, get a reaction out of you. But I think in this one, the reaction failed because he's the one that walked away this time, not her. So, yeah. Like I said, I just wish you would stop entertaining him. Just let him do him and be done. But that's it, you guys. Be sure to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, um, hit the notification bell button, and share the video. Until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear a mask or not, whichever one you do. Be safe. Be blessed. And I'll catch you guys later on for Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, The Shy, Baddies, ATL, and Potomac House. I'll see you guys later.